Hello everyone, my name's Tim and I've been involved in paediatric emergencies for far longer than I care to remember. My objectives this afternoon are to demonstrate to you paediatric basic life support. That's both for babies and children. The number one cause of death in children is always respiratory. We think about cot deaths. But before we go into that, when is a baby not a baby? And that is at one year old. After one year old, they become children until puberty. And after puberty, we'd always treat them as a small adult. So we have a baby here under one year old. And the number one cause of death, as I've already said, is always respiratory. So that causes a few problems. Because they stop breathing first, the heart's still going. And the heart will keep going until it's used up any oxygen reservoir in the body. So they develop vital organ damage, particularly to the brain, almost immediately the heart stops. So because of that reason, we have to treat babies differently to adults. We will always give them five initial ventilations. Five initial ventilations. A few things you need to understand when dealing with babies is, one is you can't tilt the head right back, like so. That's because the trachea, or windpipe, is not fully developed. And if you kink the head back, it's like a straw, you kink the straw off. So you won't get any air in at all. The position we put the head is what we call the neutral position. So with a baby, always stabilise the head, one hand on the forehead, other finger on the bony prominence, and we just put the head back slightly like so. We call that the neutral position. That's just like you're looking straight in front of you without your head or neck flexed. The other thing you have to be aware of with children is that you won't see the chest raise when you blow in. And that's because as I go down to blow in, I'm too near the chest to see the chest raise. And the other thing is that babies in particular they're what we call abdominal breathers. They tend to use the lower lobes of their lungs to breathe with. So that's why when you see a baby sleeping, you see the tummy goes up and down. So in order to get around that, we always suggest you put the hand on the lower ribs over the tummy like so. So when you blow in, you're reliant on seeing that hand, feeling that hand move. So you know you're getting air into the baby. The format that we use for basic life support is the same, is always danger, we always make sure there's no danger, the safe approach as we call it. We then assess the patient, make sure that they are dead. So we do that by hello and give them a shake. I'm looking for signs of life. And the signs of life are they coughing, moving or breathing. And if they're not, I immediately would start with five initial ventilations. The first thing we need to do is A of the airway, open the airway, and we cover that one finger under there, one on the forehead, just slightly back from normal. We now want to B for breathing. We've opened the airway, and what that does is that brings the tongue right forward. So we now want to check whether they've started breathing spontaneously. So hand across the lower ribs, I'm listening and feeling for breath against my cheek and hand for 10 seconds. And if they're not breathing, I now do five, five immediate breaths. Seal your mouth round the mouth and nose of the victim and you blow in till you feel the hand move. So off we go. And we next want to encirculate that round the body as soon as possible. And we do that by 15 compressions, not 30 compressions as adults. With paediatrics, it's half of that because it's all about airway, it's 15 compressions. So we take the nipple line, we can use what we call the encircling technique, and that's reliant on your two thumbs meeting in the middle. If the baby's at large, your thumbs can't meet in the middle, then we use another technique called two fingers like so, other two fingers on top. And remember, the speed we do it at, two a second, 120 a minute, or we push to a third of the depth of the chest. 15 compressions, two ventilations. 
What is paramount importance here is that you do that for at least one minute before you even think about going for help. Okay? Otherwise, they will develop brain damage. Obviously, if there's someone else there with you, they can initially ring up for an ambulance while you're doing the basic life support. What's important with babies and children is you do that basic life support for at least one minute before you go for help. With children, it's a little bit easier in a way because you can see the chest raise when you blow in. And we can put the head back a little bit further and the position we put the head in a child is what we call sniffing the morning air position. So by taking a sniff, just slightly back from normal. So again, we're using making sure there's no danger to self. We then assess the child. Hello, you're all right. There's no response, no signs of life, no coughing, moving or breathing. So I immediately open the airway. Remember, just back into sniffing the morning air position. Pinch the nose off, seal your mouth around the mouth and we do five initial ventilations. We next go down to the bottom of the breastbone, bottom of the breastbone there, one finger up, and off we go, 15 compressions. Good third of the depth to the chest. Remember, two seconds, so it's quite fast. Good depth, 15 compressions, so you need to count 15 compressions, two ventilations for at least one minute before I think of it. With a child, it's more likely to be a near drowning incident or something like that rather than it's not going to be a cop death. Okay. Now, I just demonstrate again, both to you, and then we summarise. So I'm looking around, making sure there's no danger. Hello, you're all right. I open the airway, just slightly sniffing the morning air position, looking in. I now look, listening and feeling, or breath against my cheek. The not breathing, so I now do five breaths. Bottom of the breastbone there, one finger up, and off we go. Notice I'm using two hands. It's easier on me using two hands. And I'm doing 15 compressions, two ventilations for at least one minute before we go any further. With the baby, of course, we've got other problems with the baby, being that they're much smaller. Okay, so I'm looking around, making sure there's no danger. Assessing the baby, hello, and there's no response at all. So I next open the airway, remember, just into the neutral position. I now look, listening and feeling. Remember, put your hand across the lower ribs for 10 seconds, and I then do five breaths. We then want to circle that round the body as quickly as possible. Okay. Encircling technique. Larger babies, of course, two fingers just below the nipple line like so. And off we go like so. To, to summarise the session, remember the importance of paediatrics. With adults, it's nearly always the heart that stops. They need things called defibrillators. Children don't need any of that because they stop breathing first, it's respiratory. So what they need is you to give them air. And that's why we always start off with five initial ventilations. And we circulate that around the body, 15 compressions to two ventilations for at least one minute before you even think about going for the ambulance. Okay, thank you very much for your time.